My eyes are bleeding. Every day, millions of people around the world are alarmed to find that their eyes suddenly develop a deep red color that is understandably very worrying. Now keep watching to discover how you can tell whether it's the relatively harmless subconjunctival hemorrhage or something more sinister that requires urgent action. Hey, welcome back, and if you're new here, I'm Optometrist Martin Aguzzi, and this channel is all about helping you to see better, see more comfortably, and keeping your eyes precious. Now, if you get value from these videos and want more, I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to the channel, and I think you'd also love my eye tips newsletter too, so do sign up using the link on the screen right now, or in the description box below. Now you may know that eye conditions come in different shapes and sizes and can of course have different causes. Now ironically the most frightening looking of these uh, probably has the least concern for the eye directly. That is a subconjunctival hemorrhage. It's a highly dramatic looking bleed over the white of the eye and comes from the blood vessels that have burst in the space between the white of the eye and the protective clear membrane that we call the conjunctiva. The reason that subconjunctival hemorrhages can look so angry and red, making the eye look like a piece of steak, is because the blood spreads widely within the subconjunctival space, making it look so much worse than it actually is. So is it serious? Well, compared to other red eye or pink eye conditions, uh, a subconjunctival hemorrhage is not serious in as far as it will not need treatment directly and will clear up all by itself. Now, as the blood drains away, the appearance of the eye will fade from an intense red to more yellow and then eventually whitening up in about two weeks or so, depending how severe the initial bleed was. The next question you're probably asking yourself is, how can you tell it apart from other red eye conditions and generally when it comes to eyes and red eyes in particular, we're concerned about anything that might uh, be an indication of inflammation going on in the eye or infection as well. So these conditions um, may present with other symptoms such as discomfort, pain, increased sensitivity to light, glare, discharge from the eyes and visual changes and other things. Now typically a subconjunctival hemorrhage won't have any of these uh, symptoms except perhaps some slight irritation in some cases. Now the irritation arises usually from there being so much blood in that conjunctival space that we talked about that the surface of the eye is no longer flat and smooth causing blinking to irritate the eye or causing dryness of the eyes because the surface is not flat and tears don't spread evenly over the surface as it normally would. These mild symptoms resolve over the next few days and in fact the characteristic of a subconjunctival hemorrhage is often in most situations that you won't feel anything at all and that uh, the red eye is often something that other people notice before you notice yourself or you happen to have a look in the mirror and notice that you've got this completely red eye or a section of the eye that is red. So what causes a subconjunctival hemorrhage? Well, the most sinister cause to rule out is cardiovascular problems or raised blood pressure, particularly if this happens quite often and on a repeated basis. I recommend that you get your family doctor to check you over if you've not had this done for some time or if you've not had a medical of any kind in recent memory. Now, alternatively, in the first instance, you can measure your blood pressure at home yourself and contact your doctor if it appears higher than it typically would. Now other common causes of these bleeds um, is anything or any situation um, that causes what we call a Valsalva maneuver. The Valsalva maneuver is performed when you forcefully exhale or breathing out against your closed airways, which you can do intentionally by closing your mouth and pinching your nose and then trying to breathe out as hard as you can. Now in real world situations, this happens and causes subconjunctival hemorrhages when people are heavy lifting, gardening or engaging in any other heavy straining activity. Now, I do warn people that if you've had a particularly bad episode of a subconjunctival hemorrhage, uh, leaving a significant portion of the white of your eye uh, all red, then you may well be prone to getting a few more of these episodes over the coming year due to the burst blood vessel uh, now being weakened and being uh, prone to future episodes uh, once again, usually when heavy straining is undertaken. Now, other common factors that can lead to subconjunctival hemorrhages include the use of blood thinning drugs. 
So regular use of non-prescription items that have blood thinning properties also, such as omega-3s, uh, can also contribute to this as well. And particularly if you're using um, anticoagulant medications along with omega-3s. Really, you should consult your doctor if you're going to do this because both of these obviously then can contribute to thinning your blood more than your doctor expects. And lastly, sometimes we just can't really identify or pinpoint why you're getting these burst blood vessels. And this may just be uh, a situation where, like many other kind of medical conditions and the things that happen, there's no clear underlying cause. And when an explanation can't be found, then the most important thing is for the major um, problematic causes, such as high blood pressure, for those kind of things to be ruled out. Now, of course, if you get a red eye of any type and you have any doubt, and certainly if you're getting any symptoms at all, then it's worth contacting your optometrist or your ophthalmologist for further guidance. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, the appearance of a subconjunctival hemorrhage is so alarming to most people that they quickly go out and seek professional help anyway. And this is perfectly fine and just means that we get the opportunity to rule out anything more sinister going on, like an inflammatory condition or a, a bacterial infection or viral infection of some kind. Now, if it is just that red appearance of the eye with no other symptoms, then you should find that the redness starts to fade very quickly in the next few days, uh, which is definitely a good sign. While the conjunctiva clears up over time, you can also help um, any minor irritation by using lubricant eye drops to reduce the friction when you blink and to reduce the impact of dryness of the conjunctiva. If you found this video because you're looking for answers for your red eyes, uh, then hopefully you've got some of the answers you're looking for. Hopefully it's reassured you and hopefully you know what to do if you have any of the other symptoms other than that red eye. Do leave me a comment if that is you, if you've got a red eye of any type, if you've had a subconjunctiva hemorrhage or you know anybody that has. How quick did it resolve and how did you feel about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to sign up for my newsletter community for more regular actionable eye care tips. My eyes are bleeding. Every day millions of people are. My eyes are bleeding. My eyes, they're bleeding. My eyes, my eyes are bleeding, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes are bleeding. My eyes, my eyes, they're bleeding. Every day, eyes are bleeding. It's my eyes, they're bleeding.